What's up guys? Alex Corey with CultivatedChange.com and KC Gardens. In this video we're going to go over the biggest pain in the butt part about growing microgreens on a schedule indoors. I was going to do a video with like the top three but I realized they all really boil down into one thing so we'll get to it coming up. Okay, this is much more noticeable if you're in a house compared to in a warehouse, and I'm still in a house, and I just moved, which is why I noticed this. But aside from changing media when you're moving, not advisable, the overarching problem with growing micros on a production schedule for a business is environmental control. If you're growing outside in a greenhouse, you're used to this already because it's impossible to keep the humidity and temperature fluctuations in any small range. You're used to uh, 20 degree swings in temperature and humidity as well. So greenhouse growers plan for that and as such don't have such a stringent harvest day. Indoor growers, like myself, <clears throat> usually in a warehouse, have the niche for... Um, quality and consistency down for micros because usually it's always a seven day or 10 day cycle. You seed the same day, you unstack the same day, you water the same amount, there's no variation. But if you are in a house and heat rises on any given day, minus some intense like air conditioning, um, which is a little interesting with microgreens anyway, you get the same fluctuations. So. I recently moved and also swapped from peat to cocoa. Very interesting um, because my stacking time is now thrown off. My watering is now different and my time under lights is different. So I'll just go crop by crop. So if you can see that hole there, there's a nice hole in the red acre cabbage and that's the not the worst one. Those are probably on the bottom because I stack five deep, as you can see in my other videos. So the trays on the bottom, not a bad idea to rotate them up to the top so they don't have all of the pressure all the time because the moisture will just get trapped there. That There's an enormous amount of heat that gets generated when those are on the bottom. So maybe swap those so they're not baking and wet, which is prime conditions for mold. Uh, timing on broccoli and cabbage doesn't get thrown off too much but the humidity levels and moisture content definitely does. So I put them under hot lights to try to wick some of that off. The one thing that is a pain in the butt and the most, I wish I didn't have to grow these. They're the most common micro and one of the more favorites because they're delicious and they work well with everything, but sunflower, I hate sunflower. <laughs> the timing on sunflower is so touchy with any of the brassicas, they can go days. It doesn't matter. They actually gain weight, like they look better. Some people don't like the tougher stem and I get that, so they like the baby greens. But sunflower is a nightmare because it is so sensitive to heat and humidity. It's a summer crop, so in the winter I have it on a 10 day cycle. It's stacked like this for about six or seven days because it wasn't germinating well. Um, and now it's going to have to go on a seven day cycle because this is six days in. I seeded last Thursday and today is Wednesday. Uh, if I had uncovered that two days ago, they'd be ready or tomorrow they would be ready. So I will have to play catch up and it takes basically two weeks per generation for the schedule to shift. And that's a little scary when you do that because you're hoping you're right or else you won't have a, a crop in time. So. Uh, sunflowers are going to go back to a seven day cycle and it's May right now and it's probably about uh, 62 ambient temperature. I open the windows at night, uh, humidity drops down uh, or actually humidity rises at night because the dew point and then right now it's 75 in here. 75 is perfect, perfect temperature for basically everything, sunflowers included, which is why they're growing so profusely, but screws up the schedule and um, sunflowers are a nightmare just because if they go you know, two days too long, there's that hairy middle 
true sunflower leaf that just makes it inedible. Like it, if you wait two days too long, no one will eat it and it looks terrible. So sunflowers have to be to the day, maybe get a day leeway. Nothing else is like that. Uh, amaranth is fine, sorrel's fine. All the brassicas are fine. Brassicas definitely look a little more mature and the stem thickens, like I said, but who cares? Pea shoots will definitely get more uh, tenderly. Some people like that though. Pea shoots are the other one where, where days matter based off of juiciness and uh, stem tenderness. Um, wheatgrass doesn't really care. But just wanted to rant a little bit and say that environmental control is a pain in the butt and you have to get it dialed in. And if you change any one variable, or rather, if you're going to change something, don't do what I did and don't move to a different soil, media, peat to cocoa, and change your humidity and ambient temperature. Too much to manage, especially if you're on a timeline. If you're just growing for yourself, none of this matters. You can harvest whenever. But if you have a delivery day, same day every week, and you can't really fudge it, be very, very careful and only change one thing at a time. Learn from my mistakes. I still make rookie mistakes all the time. Anyway, until the next video. Thanks for stopping by, guys.